unfulfilled, under. 85% of people around the world are not happy in their careers. They feel stuck in jobs, unfulfilled, undervalued, underutilized, and disempowered. Personally, I've been there at different points in my career too. Oftentimes, people will partner with a coach to help them get unstuck, which can be expensive. But imagine being your own coach, where you're recognizing and addressing barriers to your career success and equipping and empowering yourself with strategies to take your career to the next level. In this course, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Hi, I'm Alicia D. Reese. As a Fortune 500 global executive coach and author, I've helped clients advance their career, leadership, and organizational goals for over 25 years. I'm going to give you a roadmap for achieving the career results you want and deserve, highlighting proven strategies and real-life case studies from my personal life, career, and clients. So let's dive into my LinkedIn learning course together. One of the highlights of my summers is taking a road trip, hitting the open road with my family, singing, laughing, and sharing stories. Before we leave, we always ensure that we have the essentials, a great music playlist, snacks, activities for my eight-year-old daughter, and great books. Having these ensures a seamless, fun, and memorable trip. As you start the journey to coaching yourself in the same way, it's important that you adopt key behaviors to use along your road to career success. When you have the right resources and tools at the start, it makes your journey smoother and more fun too. Let's explore these behaviors. The first is to be open and honest with yourself. That means that you're willing to explore the good and bad about your own behaviors, including those that could be roadblocks in advancing your goal. Examples include a lack of initiating and building relationships with influential people, such as sponsors, not following up on feedback that was given to you, giving up too easily on your goal, or allowing fear to weaken your confidence. Looking at your own behaviors deepens your self-awareness and puts you in the driver's seat to achieving the results you desire. The second behavior that is foundational in coaching yourself is exercising curiosity about your situation. Successful coaches who achieve breakthrough results with their clients have a strong sense of curiosity about the client's situation. They ask questions that deepen the client's thinking about a situation with the hopes of creating the space for the client to have those wonderful aha moments. One great way to exercise curiosity is to follow the five whys model. Start with asking the initial question using why about a situation. For example, why didn't I receive the promotion? An answer could be, I didn't have the skills for the role. The second why question would be, why don't I have the skills for the role? Perhaps an answer would be, I never took the time to develop the required skills. Here's the third question. Okay, so why didn't I take the time to develop the required skills? Maybe the answer would be, I didn't have the bandwidth. Then the fourth question could be, why didn't I have the bandwidth? One answer might be, I was being pulled in a lot of directions at work. The final and fifth question, why was I being pulled in a lot of directions at work? And perhaps you discover your answer is, I don't know how to say no, so I never created boundaries with my time. You can do this as many times as you need to, but it turns out five will often get you to a revelation that you didn't see before, like in the scenario I just shared. The final foundational behavior to coaching yourself successfully is to harness personal accountability, committing to work through the coaching situation no matter what obstacles you encounter. Identify obstacles that could get in the way of you coaching yourself. For example, one obstacle could be that you don't have the time. Then what's your plan to overcome that obstacle? Perhaps it's blocking time on your calendar. Give yourself a timeline, which could be four weeks. 
each week, identify times that you will spend coaching yourself. Accountability also means making and keeping commitments. Create a commitment statement such as, I will commit to achieving my goal by March 2nd. Having a specific date strengthens your personal accountability to achieve your goal. By adopting core coaching behaviors, being open and honest, getting curious, and harnessing personal accountability, you'll have a strong foundation to navigate the road to successfully coaching yourself with ease and confidence. Years ago, I worked with a client who was an operations leader. Let's call her Amy. As she was approaching her 10-year work anniversary with her company, she started to feel unhappy. So she decided to change jobs internally. She interviewed for a finance leader role and was so happy to receive the call that she got in the role. But just after three months in the new job, Amy found herself unhappy once again she decided to engage me as her coach. Once we started working together, we quickly began getting clear about her real challenge. It wasn't about her job. She was unhappy with the direction her organization was taking. It seems there was a mismatch between her core values and theirs. This clarity of the real challenge gave Amy the information she needed to make an informed decision about her situation which ultimately resulted in her leaving her organization. Amy joined a new company with similar values to hers and with work that was energizing. I checked in with Amy a year later. She was truly happy. Looking at Amy's story and the stories of so many unhappy working professionals, it's not enough to just consider what's happening on the surface when you're having issues in your career. You have to focus on the real challenge to put the right solutions in place to achieve the career results you want. There are a few ways to uncover that real challenge, and I want to share them with you as you learn to coach yourself. The first way is to start with identifying the surface problem. Here's a hint. This is typically what's top of mind for you. It could be that you didn't get favorable performance feedback on a project. Next, consider mapping your own behaviors and actions that led to the unfavorable feedback. What could you have done differently, if anything? If there are things you could have done differently, like managing your stakeholders more closely and communicating more updates with your manager, those are the areas you should consider focusing on. If you recall my client's story, she realized that her core values were a mismatch with her organization. Taking a page from Amy's playbook, another way to uncover your real challenge is to consider your top five personal values that anchor you personally and professionally. For example, these values could be creativity, open communication, integrity, growth, and inclusion. Now, consider your career and work environment. Where are there conflicts between your personal values and the current state of your career and work environment? Answering this question can uncover the problem that you need to tackle. For example, let's just say that one of your personal values is growth, but you haven't been able to grow your skills and career in five years. You've been doing the same job with no visible growth. That's a conflict that you should consider tackling. Finally, you can also get clear about your motivators and stressors, the work activities that energize you or leave you feeling drained. One of my motivators is coaching. I love it and feel tremendous energy from it. One of my clients finds spreadsheet work to be a stressor. It de-energizes her. Whatever your stressors are, list them. Now determine the percentage of time you engage in work that activates your motivators versus your stressors. If you're engaged in more stressful work than motivating work, then that's the real challenge you need to tackle. Now that you have a few ways to go beyond the surface challenge, 
Which one will you use? Experiment with them and see which one suits your personality. Regardless of the one you use, you're now well positioned to transform your career. It's been said that communication is a two-way street, sharing a message with your audience and listening to them in return. But there's yet another aspect of communication too. That's the dialogue that you have with yourself, which can be positive or negative. Negative self-talk, which is also known as your inner critic, shows up in the form of limiting beliefs that threaten the advancement and achievement of your goals. When coaching yourself, it's important to have a plan of attack to proactively combat your inner critic. And boy, do I have the tool for you that will stop your inner critic dead in its tracks. Many of my clients have used it and personally so have I. It's Albert Ellis's ABCDE model. The best way to explain the model is to apply it to a real scenario. Let's look at a situation where you were competing for a promotion opportunity and you have to go through a series of interviews. A, what is the activating event? You are competing for a promotion opportunity. B, what are your beliefs about the situation? This is the time to be brutally honest with yourself and expose any limiting beliefs. For example, maybe you worry that you're not talented enough. Your mind is going to go blank in the interview, or you aren't going to know how to answer the questions. C, what are the consequences of your beliefs? Those beliefs can lead to feelings of discomfort and a lack of confidence. As a result, you could get so nervous that you aren't going to show up strong in the interview. D, dispute the limiting beliefs. This is the secret sauce of this recipe. There's power in disputing the limiting beliefs with evidence. Begin asking yourself, do you have evidence that your beliefs are true? More than likely, you can actually come up with data points that counter your limiting beliefs. Think about a time when you were interviewing and you did well. What happened and how did you show up? You could even solicit input from trusted colleagues and friends. Finally, E. What is the effect of disputing your thoughts? Explore how you're feeling now that you have disrupted your negative self-talk. Typically, the effect is favorable and you have stronger self-confidence. If the effect is not favorable, then consider revisiting the evidence you uncovered about yourself. For instance, maybe you learned that you have a skill gap. Put a plan in place to close the gap and apply for the promotion at a later date. You can apply the ABCDE model to any area where you want to disrupt negative self-talk and patterns of limiting beliefs. You'll not only combat the inner critic, but you'll harness your inner coach. Recently, I was having a conversation with my eight-year-old daughter about the struggle she was having in math. She was very frustrated saying, I will never understand this word problem. Why can't math be easier for me, mommy? I responded as any good mother would by reassuring her that she is smart and with practice and an optimistic attitude, she would get it. It just takes effort. At first, she was resistant, but soon began practicing word problems and learning from her mistakes. I'm already noticing an increased resilience and optimism in the way she approaches her homework and even other challenges. What I've just described is the transition from a fixed to a growth mindset. People who possess a fixed mindset consider their attributes, intelligence, and skills fixed or immovable with no room for improvement. At the first sign of resistance or trouble, their confidence diminishes and they give up. On the other hand, a growth mindset is when people believe that their attributes, intelligence, and skills can grow over time with effort. 
Resilience is the fuel you need to activate a growth mindset. If you experience a setback, harnessing your resilience can increase your confidence and optimism, just like in my daughter's case. When it comes to coaching yourself to manage your career, it's important to adopt a growth mindset to advance your goals. There will be times when you have to grow your skills to get the promotion, or you receive constructive feedback that could be painful to hear, but if applied, it could be instrumental to securing your next job. As you take ownership to manage your career, a key area to consider is the type of mindset you possess. Let's look at a few examples of growth and fixed mindsets. See if you can guess which is which. I'm never going to be selected to lead a project. Is that fixed or growth mindset? It's a fixed mindset because the person feels that their situation will not change. A way of looking at it through a growth mindset lens would be, I may not have been selected for the project this time, but I will work on growing my skills to be ready next time. How about this one? Yes, I failed but I learned a lot about myself. Fix the growth mindset. This one is a growth mindset. Notice that although the person failed, they were able to grow from the situation. Life happens to everyone. There will be times when your fixed mindset creeps in. It's only natural. Trust me, I've been there many times. Don't beat yourself up in those moments. Take time to reflect on the situation and determine what you learned and how to keep moving forward. Have you ever interviewed for a role that you thought you were going to get 